Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on this video today. If you are new, welcome. My name is Mallory. If you are not new, welcome back. So today's video is 100% dedicated to my friend Lillian over at Astor Lane Creations. Now, Lillian makes amazing tumblers, but if you ask me what her specialty is, what she just knocks out of the park is resin keychains and badge reels. So a few months ago, I ordered some keychains from her. I really didn't tell her what I wanted. I just kind of gave her some ideas and told her to run with it. I knew whatever she did, I was going to love. And these are what I got. Look how adorable they all are. So when I saw this one, I fell in love with it. I don't know if it was just the sunflower pattern, the vinyl, whatever it was, it just spoke to me. So I knew that I kind of wanted to recreate something similar. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And then when I saw all of these tumblers with the varsity style letters coming out, I knew exactly that that would be perfect. I was just going to recreate that with these colors and this pattern on a tumbler. So this is what I ended up with. Now, my color is a little bit more orange than maybe I would have liked, more than hers is, but it's still really pretty. I will link both colors. Um, I tried to match it as close as possible, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. It's not identical, right? Um, but what we're gonna be focusing on in this tutorial is how to do like this, this letter with the offset, and I don't know if you guys can see, but there's a little bit of a gap. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how to subtract this shape or this uh, wording from your decal so you're not actually layering your decals on top of each other. They're just kind of sitting flush. So I will make sure to link all of the products that I used in the description below. If you guys have any questions or comments, definitely leave them in the comment section for me. And definitely go check out Astor Lane Creations. I will be sure to link her shop as well in the description. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, it would mean a lot to me if you did that. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm starting with a 20 ounce skinny. I've sanded it like I do all my other tumblers and I'm gonna prep it with an acrylic paint. This is just like a coral color. Looking back, I probably should have done a gold color to pull more of the gold tones in the glitter, but either way, not a big deal. You just want to prep your cup with a paint that is as close to the glitter as possible. That's just gonna ensure that you use as little glitter as possible. So I ended up doing two coats. You could use spray paint, whatever paint you have on hand. I deleted the rest of the video, but this is just a simple glitter application. Nothing too fancy here. It's a fine cut glitter, so it went on really easy. We did two coats of epoxy over this before we were ready for our decals. Now it does still have a couple rough spots. There's some glitter poking out. The top and the bottom are still rough, but um, before I go into sanding and decal work, I want to measure the tumbler so I make sure that my decal is the correct size. So this tumbler is approximately 80 inches, 80 inches, eight inches in length, um, a little bit over, but I'm just gonna go with eight. We're just gonna round it. This is just a quick sanding. I'm not too worried about the top or the bottom right now. I just want to make sure that the actual sides of the tumbler and where we're applying our decal is completely smooth and free from imperfections. If there is anything, any glitter poking out or you know bumps in your epoxy, it will accentuate once you apply that decal in another layer. So just make sure it is smooth before you apply your decal. This is that beautiful sunflower printed vinyl from the Vinyl Cottage, and I'm just going to trim it to size before we cut it using our silhouette, and I've just got a white vinyl here as well. All right, now for the decal itself and designing it. Hopefully I don't confuse you guys and I can explain this thoroughly. So I'm going to start by just typing out the first word, which is mom, and I've got a few different varsity style fonts. All of these, I believe, came from either Defont or Creative Fabrica. I will definitely link the one that I used for this design. So this is Varsity Regular. This one is from Defont, and all I'm gonna do here is you can see 
by looking at it that our dimensions are bigger than the actual width of the letters. So you want to ungroup it and group it back together. It's strange, I know, but that will just give you the true dimensions of your letters. So now I've already measured my tumbler. I know that I want the width of this to be six inches and I want the height to be 2.5. So that's gonna be the perfect size for my actual tumbler. So six inches by 2.5. Now for the center wording, this hippie, what we're gonna do, we're just gonna type it out again like we did the first decal, mom. I'm gonna change the colors. Now obviously these colors aren't accurate. This is just to show you guys. And for this one, I'm using Hello Valentina, I think it is, from DeFont. And when you have a script font, you wanna make sure that you weld your letters together so everything sticks together. You will have to group it if you have any like dots on your eyes or anything like that. So now that we have our actual design, I'm just using the top one that I made ahead of time to visualize and make sure everything is right. There is no right or wrong size for this one. I'm just kind of guesstimating, placing it over the mom to see what visually looks the best. So from here, I'm going to center everything on my page that I'm working on. So I'm gonna center mom, I'm gonna center hippie, and this is just to make sure that everything is centered, that hippie is centered with mom. However, I don't like it when it's centered with mom. I feel like it comes up a little bit too high. So again, just whatever is visually appealing. So I'm gonna move it down just a smidgen and when I'm happy with the placement, this is, this is what I want. From here, we're gonna work on the offset and subtracting a larger portion of this hippie from the mom, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna duplicate this one that I have, the original hippie, because I know that that's the decal that I'm going to need to send to be cut. So now we're working on our offset. For the offset, you're gonna right click and then click on offset. Let's zoom in so you guys can see. I'll do it again. Right click, click on the word that you want to make a little bit larger and hit your offset button. And that is going to make your wording or whatever image you're working with larger. Now this is too large. I don't want it to be this big. So I'm just gonna come over here to my little offset panel and adjust the distance of that offset down until I'm happy with it. So it's starting to look a little bit better. Uh, 0.035 is too big, 0 0.025 was too small for me, so I just went right in the middle. So the magic number for me was 0 0.025, and that just made the hippie a little bit bigger than the original file that we created. I hope that makes sense. All right, so now I'm gonna move that. This is what we're going to actually be subtracting now. So I'll change this all to the same color so you guys can visualize it. Make sure you group that offset back together so you don't lose any of you know the dots in your eyes. So now that we have our offset, which is a little bit larger, um, oh, first I'm gonna remove this little tiny dot in that H because that's too small and all it's gonna do is annoy me later <laughs> when I'm trying to weed it. So um, if you release the compound path on your full wording, it will separate everything so you can delete what you want to. So that's what I did there. All right, so moving back to this larger offset, you're gonna right click and you're gonna click release compound path. Now what that does is you saw everything change to white and now instead of hippie being one solid word, I can select the little um, 
pieces that would normally be subtracted, I can select those and erase them. So we're just left with the true outline of that word a little bit larger than our original. I hope that makes sense. So now that we have this, we want to actually subtract this image from mom. So we're gonna group the whole word, hippie, don't forget to get your little dots from the eyes. Group that together, you're gonna right click on that, you're gonna hit shift on your keyboard, and then you're gonna select mom. So now we have both images selected. From here, you're gonna go over to the right side and you're gonna open up this little icon. It says open the modify panel. And there's an icon that says subtract. And what this is gonna do is it's going to use the frontmost shape, which is a hippie that we selected, and it's gonna cut a hole in the backmost shape, which is the mom. So click subtract and there it is. It removes everything. <clears throat> now at this point, everything is separate. All of your little pieces are separate. So if there's some that are too small to weed, you can delete them at that point. And then here it is to visualize. So this is the original hippie file that we created and it's just gonna sit right in the middle with a little bit of an offset, which is gonna be our glitter that we see shining through. So now our design is 100% done. We are ready to cut it in the corresponding vinyl. So the mom is gonna be cut in that sunflower vinyl and then hippie is going to be cut in the white vinyl. So once you cut your vinyl decals out, it is supposed to be a fairly easy process. I didn't have any issues weeding the hippie. I cut these at the vinyl or cow 651 setting. It's a preset on the silhouette cameo, but this printed vinyl was really giving me trouble. It didn't cut all the way through. I mean, it did, but it wasn't really releasing. Um, I was starting to lose some of the little outlines and I was hoping I could save it, but I just had to trash this piece and I cut another one. This time I adjusted the force a little bit, so I think it is normally at a 10 on that preset and I bumped it up to 13 and I was still having some issues. So just note to self, if you are cutting this printed vinyl, you I should have done a test cut first, but you're definitely going to have to adjust your settings and your force to cut it nice and clean. So this is my second attempt. I was still having issues as I was trying to remove the inner little pieces. The outline was coming up and I could see that it was going to get stretched and I was getting pretty frustrated. I did not want to waste any more vinyl, so I was determined to get this decal correct. So here is an example of reverse weeding. If you've never seen that, it's basically just the opposite of a normal weeding. You're going to apply your transfer tape to the whole piece of vinyl and decal that's already cut up. You're going to remove part of that paper backing and you can peel the excess vinyl up at this point. Now you will have to kind of get in there and work because it is stuck to that transfer tape, but once you get it out, it will leave whatever image you have or want stuck to that transfer tape, if that makes sense. So this is a great way if you have really intricate pieces and a lot of little tiny pieces that might be moving around when you do start to pull that excess vinyl out, or you could just do a test cut and account for needing more force before you do this <laughs> you live and you learn but um all this when all this was said and done it probably took me about 10 minutes to do this process so in hindsight i probably should have just gone back and cut another piece but now you guys get a great example of reverse weeding on some intricate designs and i also now ensure that everything is nice and straight and none of my outlines moved or got stretched. So when all that is done, you are ready to apply this to your tumbler. So our tumbler is nice and smooth at this point. We're just going to make sure that it's really center. I'm going to go with the eight inches and because our decal was six inches, I'm going to come down an inch on each side 
and our transfer tape is a little bit larger than our paper backing so I stick it to one side of the tumbler and then just peel it up remove that paper backing and follow the guide of the cup to lay it down nice and smooth now really make sure that you smooth this out before you remove that transfer tape you don't want to stretch any of those lines and you really don't want to like yank up on that transfer tape you're pulling it more back at an angle if that makes sense so as soon as you get this decal applied you're ready to place the center one and i'm just using the same transfer tape that i had and i'm going to remove the paper backing and kind of place it a third of the way down so i have some of the word exposed and the parts that are exposed i'm just going to line up and you should just have a little bit of a gap and once that is nice and straight the rest of it should just lay down nice and straight as well now from here you are ready to apply your final coats of epoxy i use counterculture artist resin it is a thicker epoxy in my opinion i did 10 milliliters over this decal I let that spin and then I went into my final stages of sanding. So you shouldn't have a whole lot of sanding to do after this coat, but you really just wanna focus on the top and the bottom rim at that point. And because we used a fine cut glitter, because we didn't actually layer our decals, you're not gonna to need to do too many coats over this. So final steps of sanding and cleaning it up are just running a craft knife and some sandpaper around the rim. Make sure none of that excess glitter or epoxy is in there. And then I just like to use my sandpaper and just kind of get a nice stainless steel rim all the way around the tumbler. Make sure the bottom is nice and smooth and then a quick once over to make sure it's free from any imperfections. I will do one more final coat on this, another 10 milliliters. Oh, here I am just cleaning out the inside. I use pure acetone. I will do this again once more, but here is the final product. I love how it turned out. It is super bright, super springy. It matches my keychain, not 100%, but it is perfect for me. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned something from this video. If you have any questions, definitely let me know and I'll see you next time.